Hi there, in this video we're going to be looking at the HTTP interceptor inside of Angular 4.x. So if we search for a person inside of our application, we'll pull up their GitHub profile and we'll have information about them. If we take a look at our app, this is done with our GitHub service. And it's a very simple service, what this does is define a root URL, which is of course the GitHub API, and we have one function, get user information. We pass a user ID, and this returns us a user, which of course has a variety of different things, such as name, company, blog, and much more. So perhaps in your application, you find that you need to pass in a particular header, such as an authorization API key. This is what we're going to be doing in this app, and we'll be starting off inside of our GitHub server. So we have our HTTP call here. When the user, or rather us as the developer, calls this, we get a HTTP request. We're going to build in what's known as an interceptor to intercept this request and then pass through a header. So, as you can see, it currently works fine on authenticated, but we could run into a rate limiting issue. If I kept refreshing this, it would block me from the API unless I was signed in with an API key. So let's build a HTTP interceptor inside of our services, and I'll say github.interceptor.ts. I do have an Angular course available where we build this exact project, and that's over at paulhalliday.io if you'd like more information about this project. But for now, let's use export class github http interceptor. This will implement the http interceptor interface, and that comes from angular common http. So when we implement this interface, this means we need an intercept function. We're passed in a request, and that's a HTTP request, and we'll specify the body as a user. Let's also import HTTP request from Angular Common slash HTTP, as well as HTTP handler. And that's our next parameter. This is of type HTTP handler. And what this allows us to do is return next.handle and pass through that request. What this is essentially doing is simply passing the request straight forward and we're doing nothing with it. This is the absolute minimum boilerplate to get an interceptor working. Now, if we wanted to add a particular header to this, we could start off by creating a new request and that will be based on the previous request using request.clone and we'll specify a new headers by using request.headers.set. For example, if I wanted to add an authorization header, I could do so. And then I could add the GitHub token like so. This would then authenticate us with the API or indeed whatever API that you're using because we'd be passing through that authorization header with each one of our requests. We could also console.log the new request. We could log things like the request dot body and that will give us the request body. But prior to going any further, what I want to do is actually initialize this inside of our app. So I'm going to head back over to my core module and I'm going to register this by using provide and I want to provide the HTTP interceptors and that comes from angular common slash HTTP but I want to use a different class that will use the HTTP interceptors but will override that with our GitHub HTTP interceptor. And remember that comes from our services folder. And if we wanted to provide multiple interceptors, we could add multi equal to true. So what this is then doing is registering the HTTP interceptor using the one that we created inside of our application. Let's take a look at this. 
So here we have our HTTP request and that goes to the URL of the GitHub API slash users slash the user that we selected. We go through and select a different user. I'm going to select myself again and click search. And as you can see, we get the same thing. We have null for the request body because that's null at this point in time. So I'm going to remove that for now. But more importantly, if we take a look at our HTTP request and we look down at our request headers, we can't see our authorization. And that's because we need to handle on the new request rather than the previous request. So beforehand, we're simply doing nothing with the request. And now when we pass through this new request, we should see a different thing inside of the response headers. So as you can see, we now got 401 unauthorized inside of the response headers. And our authorization code here simply says token here. If we were to replace that with our actual token, we would then get the results back, but we'd be using our API key. So what this has proven is that we've intercepted HTTP request. We've then set a new header on the request and we've used the HTTP handler to instead use this request, i.e. the one that we've cloned instead of the previous request. Let's take a quick look at how we can determine whether a response is an error or not. So I'm going to close this for now and drag this back. Let's now take a look at how we can determine whether we have an error with our request. So what we'll need to do is head over to main.ts and I'm going to import rxjs slash add slash operator slash do. And what this allows us to do is add dot do on the end of our handle. I'll simply console.log that for now. And you'll notice that we get this type zero. I'm going to pass in a standard observable response. So this would be a success response. We would console.log success. This would be an error response and we console.log the error. And if we save this, we can see that we now have a HTTP error response with an error message of bad credentials and a status of 401. So this allows us magical powers because now we can determine whether we're authenticated or not. Now there's much more magic you can do here, but I'm simply going to check to see whether the error.status is equal to 401 and that will essentially mean that we're not authenticated and if we are, we're simply going to console the error you are not authenticated. Let's save this and we get this magical error now saying you are not authenticated. So I hope you can imagine just how many other things we could do at this point in time. We could navigate somebody away. We could pop up a login model. We could do much, much more. So that's essentially how we handle errors. And of course we could do it much better than this at this moment in time, but with inside of our HTTP interceptors. It's a very high level overview, but thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to check out my Angular course, which covers this along with some real world projects over at paulhalliday.io. And until next time, don't forget to hit that subscribe to stay updated and I'll see you soon in that next video.